welcome back to the channel everyone we are uh, heading up north um, to uh, work on the uh, food plots um, we got to get them sprayed this weekend um, we're just going through Green Bay I just left work so uh, it is about uh, 1 o'clock on a Friday and uh, we got to get the food plot sprayed uh, I'm probably gonna mow them first and then uh, and then spray them to kill everything and then in two weeks we'll be coming back up and uh, we will be planting them so one of the, one of the things um, that I've kind of learned recently about uh, seeding uh, if you want to use that term um, and fertilizing at the same time so what, what I found out recently is that if you throw down fertilizer when you plant your seed the fertilizer naturally takes the pH down in your soil so one of the recommendations that I heard recently is um, that at the same time you're seeding and fertilizing you should throw down some more lime just to help bring that pH up now there's other products out there uh, well I forget what the one is called something something plot start or something like that it's a liquid form it's kind of pricey compared to just putting down pelletized lime or other types of lime so it's kind of it's kind of, it seemed kind of pricey to me so so what it, the, the, the thing is, is what they're saying is that the, the fertilizer is uh, bringing your pH down and that's, that's why you might have be having issues with your stuff growing. So this is something new to me, I didn't know that, that the fertilizer did that. Um, I, cause I usually put down the pelletized lime or the lime, whatever kind of lime I'm using, I usually put that down first and then you know a uh, day or two later or a week later then I, I seed the field you know um, and put fertilizer down when I seed so because the fertilizer is like a time release usually um, it doesn't doesn't really do something right away until you get some rain and whatever so I guess that's new to me uh, but it makes sense uh, you're throwing down this fertilizer and it's it's uh, screwing up your pH in your soil and whatever. So the recommendation uh, was to was to throw some lime down at the same time you're seeding. So that's what we're gonna do in two weeks. Um, but for this weekend, we're just gonna spray. We need to kill everything, get everything back, uh, you know, back to dirt, I guess. And then we're gonna throw down. We have. Uh, um, we bought our seed from uh, Northwoods uh, Whitetails this year. Um, uh, each year we're trying somebody different just to see. I mean, eventually we'll probably get to a product that we're just going to stick with. But I mean, I, I like trying different things. So everybody has something that's a little different. So we're going to try the Northwoods Whitetails this year. Um, and uh, we got their, uh, I believe it's called Sweet Feast Brassica that we're going to be putting down, and uh, and then in in September uh, we'll be throwing down the rye grain like we did last year, and uh, I really think that helped out with the weeds this year, and I showed you that in the last video. Um, so I think we're going to do we're going to do that all again. We're going to do the whole field this time, um, so that that should help and I'm kind of thinking uh, for spring because I haven't I, I haven't seen really good results with the with the uh, uh, what did I power plant I planted power plant now two years ago when I did the power plant in spring I had all kinds of bucks roaming around there and, and I shouldn't say I haven't seen results because I did the last time I checked the cameras, there were six different bucks in there, but there wasn't one bigger than a four-pointer. Um, so, you know, that could 
I, I don't know. I'm attracting a lot of little bucks and not nothing big is gonna come into the area. I don't know, you know, if those little ones are all around there. So I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, it's kind of a toss up right now with, uh, with what I want to do there. But anyhow, I was thinking with the rye grain is just let it grow in spring and, and, and then, and then kill that off in August before I plant the, uh, brassica or what I'm going to, it's been two years now that I put brassicas in there. So, um, next year I'm going to have to do something else because you're not supposed to plant them more than two years in a row in the same place so um so next year i'm gonna have to put something else in there for the fall um otherwise it takes uh takes too much too much of the whatever's in the soil out of the soil so so that's what we're gonna do this weekend um, basically we're going to mow it off, spray it, and then two weeks we're going to come up and seed it. So come along for the ride, we'll be, uh, we'll be there shortly, we're about less than an hour away. Well you can see the, the weeds have started to take over in this section here. I mean we had all of those weeds over there um, last time already. Um, but this, this power plant is supposed to get to four feet tall and it never gets there because they eat it right off. I don't know how good you can see that. But they just, they chew it all off and uh, obviously it's heavily enough browse that it's never going to get to four feet, you know. And uh, this product, um, the deer love it, obviously, but um it it dies off as soon as there's a, a a first frost it just it just dies real quick so that's why we're getting rid of it it was here all summer we'll see what's on the camera And uh, so we're just going to mow this down, this whole thing down, and then we're going to come in and spray it. And uh, there's uh, thunderstorms, scattered thunderstorms all the night and tomorrow. So I'm just going to, I'm going to spray it tonight once, and I'll spray it again tomorrow in the morning if there's a break in the storms. And that spray is supposed to, if, if it's got at least two hours um, without rain, it's supposed to do its job. So... Uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get this uh, sprayed and killed off and we'll be ready in two weeks to uh, seed. So, uh, so I guess we got to get going on this, you know. So the first thing you want to do before you uh, start mowing is you want to open one of your favorite beverages so that you're ready to go. You don't want to dehydrate while you're mowing the, the food plot or anything like that. And uh, just so you know that... Uh, that little round thing that's on the side of your tractor, that's what it was made for, was to put your favorite beverage in there, okay? So uh, let's get this mower started here. This thing is uh, an old simplicity. Let's take a look at this. This is an old simplicity, okay? And uh, it runs pretty good yet. Uh, the mower deck's a little beat up. I've lost a wheel there. I'm not sure where that wheel is, but it's laying out here somewhere. And uh, the problem I have with it is these foot switches right here on the uh, 
on the clutch um, they went out on me and I was able to get them out of there but I can't get the new ones back in so all I do is I leave that hang out like that and uh, so I push it in with my thumb um, just like this here it's just a switch and I just push that in with my thumb and then I start start the mower and I know that's not the safest way of doing it but uh, the mower deck ain't on so you know I know what I'm doing you know if you don't know what you're doing stay away from these type of machines I guess you know um, is the bottom line so uh, let's get this thing running Okay, so there you go. I got it all mowed. Now, as you might imagine, this, this is pretty rough on the mower. There's a lot of rocks out here. And you skim right over the rocks, but it still does, it still damages the blades and stuff. So, but, I mean, it gets the job done. I mean, that's why you buy a $100 mower. Um, so, so if you do break it, you didn't break nothing good, right? So, I, I've got one more thing to show you here. And uh, this is something I've observed now two times in a row. Um, and I could be all wrong on this. But this field here was full of these weeds here with the big tassel on it, right? So I looked that up. And uh, what I'm coming up with, it, that's pig's weed. Okay? So two years ago when I planted power plant, I had a whole field full of pig's weed along with the power plant, but it was all pig's weed. So I have to believe that that pig's weed is in the seed, okay? Now, the only reason I believe that is because, you know, my clover plot doesn't have any pig's weed in it at all. And I know I mow that, but it still would still grow, I think. I still would see it. Um, and it's all basically congregated right here where the, uh, where the power plant was planted. So I really, I really feel that that seed is coming in the power plant. Um, so now that's two times that I planted power plant, and both times I had pig's weed, and a lot of it. Now, according to the internet, the deer will eat pig's weed, so maybe it's in there for a reason. Um, but I don't like it. Um, I really don't. It t it takes. Excuse me. <clears throat> it takes over everywhere. I mean, this is one of my oak trees. Look at that thing. It's buried in pig's weed, you know. Now, the only way I can get that out of there, I can't really spray it. I got to get in there with my hands, and I, I got to pull the stuff out. And uh, so I don't like it, you know. And uh, when I plant, planted the other stuff last year, the radishes and uh, what did I plant? Sugar beets or something, right? And uh, I didn't have pig's weed last year, so... I really, I really believe it's coming from the seed, and uh, I don't know if you guys watch Jeff uh, Jeff Sturgis. Um, I watch him quite a bit. Probably watched most of his videos, and uh, he talks about this all the time about what you're getting in your seed, and uh, I kind of have a feeling he's right on this one, you know, because it really, it really seems like it's coming in the seed. So, all right, we're gonna go get the sprayer and get this sprayed. All right, so here I am with my trusty little uh, one gallon sprayer. Um, I don't know, I keep mentioning this, this stuff in my YouTube videos and uh, my wife doesn't seem to get it, you know. 
um, what I need for Christmas ever. So um, maybe one of, well, maybe one of these years Santa will will watch one of my videos and and uh, and I will get that sprayer that I need for out here. So all right, here we go. I just uh, start around the outside and work my way in. It's uh, one lap and it's almost, oh, uh, well, I probably got a quarter left only. So what people don't realize about the Roundup or the the uh, glyphosate is uh, all it needs is a drop to get on the plant and, and it'll kill it. Um, and it all depends on the plant. The stockier the plant, the harder it seems it is to kill it, you know. So, um, you know, the grass, the grass kills real easy, but the... Uh, the stocky stuff like those ferns and stuff that doesn't that stuff doesn't kill that easy so all right on for next jug all right so it is uh two weeks later um it is august 20th we're probably a little late this year but it is what it is you know when you ain't got time you got to get up here when you can get up here and you know so um you can see what the spray did, it pretty much killed everything. And uh, so we're gonna just rip this up a little bit and get some seed down. It's supposed to rain tonight or tomorrow morning. And then again on uh, Saturday night and into Sunday possibly. So uh, I wanna get, get this worked up and get some seed down quick uh, so that get some rain on it this weekend. Um, it's a little late, it's like after seven o'clock already. But uh, you know, we just got up here and uh, I'm trying to get it done. So uh, let's get to it, you know. Okay, so there you go. All I'm doing is a, a light scratch. I'm barely going down, you know, maybe an inch or two just to break up that topsoil a little bit so the seed's got something to contact and we'll pack it in with the four wheeler. Um, <coughs> All of this stuff was dead, you know, I mean, it's all sprayed real nice. It's all dead. So I, I want to leave that there because that'll decay and that'll help help the soil and everything else, you know, uh, organic matter, you know. Um, in spring, I dig it up a lot deeper just to get rid of all the old roots and and whatever, you know. Um, and it's it's wetter then too, you know, in spring usually. And you can dig deeper. This This is... This is pretty hard right now. Um, this was just a big dust storm here. Um, when I drove through town, they have the fire danger on low, but uh, boy, this, this is pretty dry. So uh, hopefully we get some rain this weekend after I get the seed down. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna be doing it in the dark. But I wanna get it down tonight, so in case it rains in the morning, um, it gets some, gets some moisture right away. So, all right, I'm gonna run back and I'm gonna get my trailer with the cedar and stuff and we'll get some seed thrown down quick. All right, I realize it's getting a little dark, but uh, this year we're using uh, Northwoods Whitetails uh, Incorporated Sweet Feast Brassica blend, okay? So it's got uh, whitetail radish, uh, forage turnip, uh, forage turnip, forage turnip, Collards, I'm not sure what a collard is. Uh, Winfred, brassica, and kale. Um, so, uh, this this Northwoods Whitetail, that's the one that Jeff Sturgis uses. And uh, so I thought we'd try it out this year. Uh, last year we used the Monster Buck Seeds from Eden, or not Eden. Um, yeah, I forget where it's from. Somewhere here in Wisconsin. Um, so, uh, and that grew really good. So, uh, so we're going to try this this year, and we're going to see if we can do a little comparison. Um, I should have uh, my videos yet from last year, and we can hopefully, 
around the same time frame you know take some take some video and uh, try and compare and see how this stuff is growing compared to that but I mean every year is different because of the the uh, moisture content how much rain we got you know did I get the seed in just before the rain I know last year I did I planted it on a Friday night like I am right now and it rained on Saturday so you know whether that happens this weekend or not I don't know you know so uh, well let's stop talking let's get the seed in the ground all right so uh, this morning we got a little bit of rain out here um, it was just a brief shower it came down pretty hard for a while so that gave us a little bit of moisture here um, we got the, the seed down last night and uh, now we're gonna throw down some lime and we're gonna throw down some fertilizer it really doesn't need fertilizer right now you could fertilize in two weeks but I ain't gonna have time so I'm gonna throw the fertilizer down now and and be done with it um, so uh, because we got we got a project coming up over Labor Day weekend that we're not going to have time to do anything with food plots. So, uh, so I got to get her done now, and uh, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. This is my other hundred dollar uh, lawnmower that I have. Um, I bought it from a guy at work, and uh, this one runs pretty good too. It smokes a little bit, but uh, the issue I have with this one is the one is the mower deck's long shot that 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 was shot when I bought it already pretty much but but uh, for using it for this I use it for that little that other pull behind mower I have that uh, swisher mower I use it to pull that and uh, it has a linkage issue up here in the front the, the linkage I have it kind of cable tied together to make it work but uh, a couple weeks ago when I said my lawnmower was broke that's what was wrong was the linkage popped apart so it had no juice to go up the hills or anything you know it just kind of just sits there so uh, so I got our cable tied back together. It's all fixed for for a while. You know, another year or so, it'll break again. But uh, it runs pretty good, so I keep using it. You know, so uh, so we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna throw down this uh, some lime and some fertilizer here quick, and uh, we're gonna get going on this. So at the at the same time we're putting this fertilizer down, we're gonna be uh, kind of packing down this soil here on top of that seed, and. Uh, pushing the seed down that seed is really fine so you can't hardly even see it in here I mean I can I can see little pieces of it here and there but it's a really fine seed so you can't when I was spreading it last night in the dark I could hardly see it so all right let's get going here So I'm gonna rant here a little bit all right so I like this spreader okay it's not a bad spreader um, it's an agrifab you, they, you get them at Fleet and Farm Menards whatever any of your stores they all carry agrifab okay the problem I got with it is it's top heavy okay so I don't understand how these engineers design this stuff that the wheels are the same as the box on there so when you fill this box up every little bump this thing wants to flip over you know it's top heavy why why didn't you just stick the wheels out another four inches or something to offset that a little bit um i just don't understand i run into this in all my products that you know i talked about a saw here the other that when i was working on the tree stand and stuff you know uh, does anybody test this stuff before they put it out there and like i say i like i like the spreader it works pretty good but it's top heavy. I've tipped it over on my lawn at home and my lawn is nice and smooth and all it takes is a little bump and the whole thing just flips over and you got fertilizer all over your lawn killing your lawn, you know? So, uh, I don't know, just another rant today. All right, so we're gonna get the fertilizer and we're gonna do fertilizer yet, all right? All right, I got the uh, fertilizer. This is just 10-10-10. Uh, I probably showed you that before. And uh, that's what we have uh, readily available at our hardware stores. So that's what we use. 
So, uh, one thing I've noticed, a lot of these guys that do food plots on the YouTube and whatever, nothing, nothing they do is wrong. I'm not ripping on them or nothing, okay? They're, what, they're probably doing a better job than I am. But some of the products they're pushing and stuff, this stuff costs money. I mean, you know, urethra and all these other products they tell you to put on your food plot, that this, this stuff's not cheap, you know? Um, so when I do this, I'm trying to do this as cheaply as possible. This this 10, 10, 10 fertilizer is only a couple bucks a bag. I think it was 3.98, you know, a bag. So I'm gonna use two bags on here and that's, that's what I'm gonna use. So that's six bucks, you know, plus my seed. The seed was 23 bucks. And I forget what the pelletized lime was. I wanna say that was 7.99 or something like that. So that's, uh, that's another 15, 16 bucks, you know. So, you know, I'm pushing a hundred bucks here just to plant this food plot, you know. I can't imagine what those other guys are spending on theirs, you know. Um, so, my point, my point being here is not to rip on them. They, what they're doing is fine. Everything they say is probably correct and there's nothing wrong with it. But for the average guy that's just coming up here on the weekends to do a food plot, you know, um, to me, cheap, cheaper is better, <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a billionaire, so, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the easiest, the best way you can do it, that's good enough for you, you know? And uh, this seed is gonna grow. You're gonna see in a couple weeks, it's gonna be a nice lush food plot as long as we get some rain. So uh, uh, I wouldn't worry about it unless you got really, really bad soil. I wouldn't worry too much about stressing out over all this other stuff, you know. A um, little bit of fertilizer. My, uh, actually this one over here, the clover plot, looks pretty nice over here. It's got a lot of grass in it again. But the other one over here is starting to look really weak, okay. So that's telling me I need to get some fertilizer down because we haven't had a lot of, a lot of rain. We've had some rain but not, not probably not what it needs. So I need to get some nitrogen on that food plot over there. Um, so I'll probably do that this weekend yet too, and then by the time uh, you know hunting season rolls around here, it should be looking pretty good over there. Um, like I say, this one this one looks better over here. This one out in the field, so we'll see. But anyhow, you know enough, enough with that. Um, I'm gonna get this fertilizer down, and uh, we're supposed to be going over to uh, Squirrely Acres um, and uh, helping him put a food plot in. Um, we're gonna take our plow over there and plow up his field. It uh, hasn't been plowed in years, so we'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully, I, hopefully I get a message from him pretty soon or I'll call him um, to see if he's up. And uh, we'll get that done yet today too. got the fertilizer down, got the lime down, and we got the seed in last night, and we kind of in the process, we kind of packed it all in. So uh, we're done here for this year. Um, we're going to let this grow. Hopefully we got some nice deer walking around here in a couple weeks. That would be nice. I finally, I finally got a doe tag, okay? Now I'm probably jinxing myself by saying this, but I've been wanting to kill this old doe out here for how many years because she's just kind of a pain in my butt all the time, you know, and uh, she kicks all the other bucks away, all the little spikes and four corns and she kicks them all in the head and they, they run away and they, you never see them again, you know, and uh, so I'd like, to, I'd like to shoot her, you know, it would be nice. And uh, so I finally landed a doe tag for up here. Um, we have a queue system here where you get on at... Uh, you know, quarter to 10 on a Monday or whatever it is. And uh, and so I got on there and uh, they put all all these people in a queue and then at 10 o'clock they, they give them a random number. So I ended up being 2100 um, this year. And uh, 
previous years I was like at 18,000 or something like that. There's only there's only there's only 100 tags available for Marinette County, Northern Marinette County. So uh, so I was 2100. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, I there's no way I'm even going to get a tag, you know. But that 2100 is for the entire northern part of Wisconsin. So it's not just Marinette County. There's other counties, you know. It's the whole the whole northern uh, forest zone, what they call the forest zone. Um, so so luckily at 2100 there was still a tag left for Marinette County, so I was able to get one. Um, so you know. Hopefully we'll get a doe at least this year up here on the property, you know. Um, and then if we get a doe, then we don't have to worry about the buck. We can just wait and hopefully a nice buck comes along. And if one doesn't, then we don't shoot one, you know. <coughs> at least, at least we'll have uh, some venison in the freezer, you know. So, so that's it. Um, we're gonna go see if that other guy's around and. Uh, get his done over there yet today and that should be it. So we're over here at uh, Squirrely Acres with uh, Craig and uh, I had talked to him a, a while back. He was one of my t-shirt contest winners and I had talked to him a while back about me coming over and, and ripping up his yard here and making a food plot for him. Uh, so we're over here. Now uh, Craig you uh, you tried making a few food plots here um, with a rotor tiller and stuff and the ground is kind of tough and whatever. Right, right, and, right, uh, exactly. So, uh, so we're over here today. We're gonna we're gonna rip this up. We're gonna put down um, the Sweet Feast Brassica from Northwoods Whitetail. Same stuff I used in my plot over there, and uh, and we're gonna put a little lime down, a little fertilizer down with it, and then Craig here is going to uh, keep you updated. So you're gonna have to go to his channel and watch his channel to see the updates on how this food plot turned out. And uh, his channel is Squirrely Acres. Right? Is that correct? Yep. Squirrel Acres, where yep. nuts come together. There you go. See? <laughs> so, so we're going to get going here. I'm, I got the plow all set up and uh, we're going to start ripping. So, all right, let's get at yeah. it. give the arms a rest here. Um, one thing you notice is that seeing this is the first time this has been plowed up in years, okay, you're gonna have a lot of roots, a lot of grass builds up behind my uh, plow there like that and lifts the plow up so I don't get the true digging, get down deep enough. But after you do it a few times, then it, it'll get better. All right, we got uh, Craig on it now. He's gonna give it a whirl.
being in the lines for some reason. Once that gets that clump of sod in there, then it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to dig. Ah! You know, we got it about as good as we can get it. The, the grass clumps just keep plugging up the plow, you know, so we can't get it worked up much better. But. Uh, you know, each time you plow it, it'll get better. But uh, one of the things I wanted to throw out there is next year I was thinking about getting a tractor with a, with a tiller, with a rear tiller on it. And uh, I was just wondering, Craig, to you, um, do you think there would be any interest in people that live up here or, or even the shackers that come up here from Illinois that have land and whatever, do you think there would be any interest that they would pay somebody to come out and have them put a food plot in? Oh, I know. You could do a, you know, we're not doing a great job here, obviously, but but if you could do a better job than this with the right equipment, oh, you oh think, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, because because I'll be honest with you, I have another lot in my woods that I would love to get uh, a food plot in there. We we tried, but again, I'm using uh, yes. limited uh, equipment. Limited equipment is what I call it. An ATV yeah. and a lawn dethatcher to plow that up. Yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah, there's, I, I think that there, there is. Yeah. Um, so, so what would a guy, so say I did this next year, and it probably won't be next year. I'll get the tractor next year, but you know, say, say in two years I start, you know, once I retire, I start doing this, you know, on right, the side. Right, right, right. Okay. What, what, what do you think that would be worth to have somebody come over and put in a, so let's say a half acre. Oh, a half, a half acre, acre food what plot. is a. Well, I, I know that some of these You're guys... You're probably are, at a quarter of an acre. Right, right. right. You know, half right. acre would probably go over to your shed there and, you know. Some guys, I, I believe they charge by the hour and they have a two hour minimum. Yeah. You, you know, it's, eh, what are you going to charge? 50, yeah. 60, 70 dollars an hour? Right. Is it worth it? If a person has the right equipment, it doesn't yeah. really take yeah. that long. Right. When, I, would, I would think with a tiller, it would be way faster than what we just did. Right, right. You Maybe... Know? going over this two or three times and somebody yeah. going around picking up the rock yeah because we definitely we definitely grow rocks here yeah no problem yeah, i got a lot of them too <laughs> so all right so i just throw it out there um if you have any suggestions leave it in your comments and and, and what what would it be worth to you to have somebody come and put a food plot in say a half acre food plot on your property you know just put it in the comments i'm, I'm just curious right now at this point so and, and then the other thing too is, you know, some of these guys that do these food plots, it's, um, they, they do everything. The seed, the fertilizer, right. whatever. Yeah, that would be the, that would be the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everything just come out and make it grow is what, what it would be, you it's, know? And so you, you have to figure out just how valuable is your time. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. We're about as good as we can get here. We got loose dirt, that's all we needed. And uh, we're gonna get some seed down and we're gonna get some fertilizer down and some lime on it and and we're gonna be good to go. Oh, Dad. What? Found out that hood ornament is like a 1936 Ford. Well, just got rid of one of them. <laughs> is it, is that, that, that the rusty one? one? <laughs> the rusty one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, there's a hood on that we found yeah. in our Buried treasure. Yeah. All right, so we got her all seeded. We got lime down. He's going to fertilize in a couple weeks here once the, the stuff comes up. And he's also going to show us what on his video what uh, what it looks like. And uh, I think as long as we get some rain, it'll grow. It's it's not an issue. So uh, we got some loose dirt there. That's all, that's all we need. Get that seed to take and uh, it'll grow. So... I think that's the end of my video here for the food plots this year. Um, hopefully the next video I'll be shooting a doe or a buck in my food plot over there because I, I have a doe tag this year. You Did got I tell lucky. You that? Did well, I tell you? Yeah. When J Josh went on at 9 o'clock yeah. and 
I completely forgot about it. I didn't go on until five after ten. Yeah. And I was number twenty four thousand in yeah. the queue. Yeah. And Josh at at being on at nine o'clock, he was eleven thousand and still oh. didn't. Yeah. See, in. I was twenty one hundred. Oh. And I got on it right at the quarter two. Or, you know, 9:45. Really? Yes. So, oh. so what they what they tell me is that that the the if you get on earlier, it doesn't matter. If you get on at the 9:45, anybody from 9:45 to 10 o'clock go in this queue, and then and then they randomly draw it. So whether you're on at 9:30 or you're on at 9:45, it doesn't matter. It's you're the luck of the draw. Right. Right. And then after 10 o'clock, you go in in order as you logged in. Okay. Okay. So. So if you were after ten, there were already thirty thousand people in front of you, you know, or whatever. Right. Ten thousand. Right, right. You know. Right. But because uh, I didn't do it last year, there were no tags last year, I believe. The year before, there were a thousand tags, if I'm not mistaken, and I was eighteen thousand or something on the queue, so I didn't get nothing. And uh, what were there? Five hundred this year? I think there were five hundred. Somewhere, some, somewhere. In, I think there were for, in, Mar for Northern Marinette County. It was, I think it was forest. five forest. Park. Yeah, forest. Yeah, forest. Uh, uh, forest zone, uh, Northern Marinette County, and uh, or are you in Forest County? What county are you in uh, here? You're no, still we're Marinette. in Marinette. You're in Marinette. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, we're still Marinette. Yeah. So yeah, it's the forest, the forest, Northern Forest Zone, which is above Highway 64, I believe, and uh, and Marinette County, and uh, I think there were five hundred tags. Well, available so i got lucky this year so all right yeah oh craig it's nice doing business with you yeah hopefully this grows and uh next year we'll look into it again and see what uh see what we can do to improve this a little bit maybe a little bigger or right you know but uh it, it helps it helps being a little bigger at least wider or so that you can you can turn easier right right with, oh, with the four wheeler. yeah <laughs> it's yeah. Right there. yeah it's it's kind of tough but, right, right, right. But, uh, so, all right. Till next time. We'll see you. We'll see you later. Appreciate it. Yep. <laughs> so now that the uh, bottom of the blind is all brushed in, it looks a lot more natural. I mean, as far as the deer go, they they can't. That'll help uh, give it more of a 3D effect that it it won't stand out to them as much. So it covers up the legs and whatever, and. Uh, I mean, you still have the window there. I got to trim a few of them branches, so I got a shot out of there. But uh, I think it looks pretty good. I think it blends in really nice. Good morning, everyone. We're uh, we're out here this morning. It's Labor Day weekend. We want to finish up a couple of things on the blind here. Um, We got a uh, shooting bench, okay? That's gonna get screwed on the front window here. And I got a shelf for the, the other window over here. And uh, we're gonna get that all screwed on. And uh, looks like we got some visitors in here since the last time. We'll clean this all out. Let me, uh, let me see if I can prop this door open so. get some light in here um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that down there in the corner got a mouse nest a lot of moss I don't know how they get that all in here this is sealed up pretty good I mean I didn't caulk the floor or nothing but man there there shouldn't be there really aren't no holes in here so I don't know where where they're getting in unless they're going under the door but I got a seal on that too, so I don't know. I mean, I have a seal on the door. So I don't know, they're getting in somewhere. I have to figure that out. But at any rate, we're gonna get these. Uh, we're gonna get these benches and uh, and uh, shelves up, and uh, that should just about finish this blind. Then um, 
we're all ready to go. It's almost hunting season, a couple weeks. Uh, my first weekend up here is the 23rd, I believe, of September. The season opens on the 17th or 18th. So, so all right, let's get this done here. Get out of here. You know, I had that, uh, that little cloth ground blind, pop-up blind, whatever you want to call it here, for how many years? And uh, I never had no spiders or mice or nothing in there. So now I put up this nice blind and got it all sealed up real nice and everything. And I got these giant spiders in here. I don't know what kind of spider they are. They must be coming from the pine trees or something. But holy cow, those are some big suckers. And I hate spiders, so I'm really not... <laughs> I put one of those uh, no pest strips up here. It doesn't seem to be doing nothing to that spider, so I don't know. That's kind of kind of strange because uh, those work really good in my outhouse. I don't have any spiders in my outhouse, so uh, well, whatever. Here, let me show you the shelves. Okay, so hopefully you can see these good enough. It's the shooting bench. Okay, bowl the bowl sit there right in front of the window like that. Okay, and. Uh, and then over here on this this wall, I just got a regular shelf for my coffee, soda, whatever whatever I have. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking this will work fine. Um, the way I made this is this the bow sits here, but then then I can pick the bow up and and turn it, you know, either either direction to take my shot. That's the way I designed it, so hopefully it works. Otherwise, I can just pick it up and shoot normal, but um, it's nice to have a rest. It'll be dead on with a rest. So, and uh, boy, the brassicas are coming in really nice. Yeah, a couple weeks, that should look really nice out here. Clover's doing good. All right. I think that's it guys so we're uh we're all ready for hunting um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in a couple weeks I finally have a doe tag this year I think I told you guys that so hopefully in a couple weeks uh, we'll have a doe at least laying out here in the field that would be nice for a change all right so Hope to see you next time. You know, if you like these videos, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit that like button also. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. Later.